hey guys we will be starting with operating system in a google style way so just visualize whatever i am telling and i am also visualizing it just uh, and learn those things right so first of all what operating system is so it is a set of programs that actually control a computer okay so basically it controls the disk drive mouse printer or monitor keyboard and the applications that we are running on it right so basically there are three services that uh, uh, control all these things one will be kernel services another one will be library services and another one will be the application level services so as the name suggests the functions are similar so if you don't know what kernel is so kernel is like uh, the core of the operating system is known as kernel okay that is a control program that uh, like functions in privileged state okay and handles all the like it creates or terminate terminates uh, processes and like responds to the requests of those services okay and the library services are basic the basic library services the library is that are uh, actually handled okay in the operating system like the tree structure the file structure all those kind of things and one is the application level services so actually like the apps that are installed on any kind of operating system maybe it uh, may it be like uh, android windows or mac os that kind of thing so uh, any kind of operating system has apps installed on it right so those application level services handle those uh, apps uh, the services that are provided in those apps like handle the processes and threads and those kind of thing now um, moving forward with the types of operating system so visualize operating system to be the root of a binary tree or like uh, yeah yeah binary tree or a uh, main head of a uh, tree and its branches will be five okay so first branch will be having the single user kind of operating system second branch will be multi user kind of operating system third will be networked operating system fourth will be multitasking or maybe single tasking operating system and fifth will be multi processor or single processor kind of operating system so just a brief about all of these and some examples so single user is that only uh, one user can be there to uh, like operating on those operating si that operating system then another will be a multi use like sorry the example will be dos or windows 98 where only a single user could have the possibility to use it then coming to second branch that is a multi user branch so it has a user database account which like just has the rights which helps two or more users to actually use that computer right like that operating system so the example can be a unix computer okay then the third branch will be networked or like work alone kind of thing so um actually networked computer is like whenever it is connected to an internet or any local network or those kind of thing where like uh, tcp ip protocols are there right and uh, like we can send data between two computers that kind of thing so example of this will be windows nt 5.0 or like windows 98 okay then will the fourth branch will be multitasking or single tasking so multitasking actually is allowing the programs to run uh, like multiple programs to run at single time so that kind of thing and uh, like in this you can have multiple performing multiple tasks at a time like let's say you are uh, having a split uh, tab and you can work you are coding as well as uh, browsing the internet that kind of thing can be there and uh, 
the the fifth one is multi processor or single processor kind of thing so first uh, like uh, the multiple multiple processor are there in the multi processor or a single processor so basically uh these can be some advanced computers that we have today so windows nt or 2000 windows 2000 are the examples so basically multitasking and multi processor kind of uh, the mixture is today now available in today's advanced computers so um, yeah these five were there so what were the five the first Uh, the types of operating system is first is single user then is multi user then is network then is multitasking then is multi processor okay so let's go to the function of uh, operating system okay so basically uh, let's say whenever you type on your keyboard then it recognizes the input right the operating system does that then if you display on the screen then it is sending output uh, to the screen to show to the user right then it actually keeps the tracks of the files like tracking the files and uh, directories on the disk okay and also controls the peripheral peripheral devices and like like the printers and all those things that are connected through it okay so basically uh, you can say that uh, the function of operating system is like uh, one is device interfacing the second can be a file system management okay the third can be multi user management the fourth can be multi processing kind of uh, management then can be memory management and then can be a multi threading kind of thing okay so um all those things are there and uh, like so we have actually discussed all these things uh, somewhat somewhat so you will be having an idea now coming to the objectives of operating system right so first of all it needs to be having an abstraction kind of layer like you don't need to have the, uh, like the user should not um, be wanting to know the complexities of uh, uh, which are actually going on the lower level of the system right so it just needs to click a button and just let's say if you want to create a file just it clicks a button names it names the file and just it's done that kind of thing but it should not know how the operating system is handling that that kind of thing so abstraction is there abstraction is one of the objective of operating system okay second will be like uh, operating system objective will be to allocate resources to the program and processes so basically like uh, resources are the computation power kind of thing and processes that are actually utilizing those to perform the task given by the user right and then will be to provide a pleasant and effective user interface right so uh, you need to have a great gui kind of thing uh, and that operating system should offer right so let's say if you want to create uh, an operating system so how many types of design can be there like we there can be multiple but uh, let's uh, just explore those uh, one can be a monolithic system second can be like hierarchy of different types of layers in it then third can be a virtual machine system kind of thing fourth can be an exo kernel that will be used to handle all those things and uh, like fifth can be a kind of a client server model that uh, Uh, we generally use in a uh, web development kind of thing right so like these can be some of the designs that we can actually structurally make the operating system okay uh, so the main concepts in this operating systems is only five like you just need to know the details of five things only to cover all the whole operating system basically right generally so first will be 
the processes you need to know what are processes how it's done and all those things second will be the memory management okay third will be the io management fourth will be the file systems and fifth will be the security okay so uh, operating system has five basic concept processes memory management io management file system and last is security okay so the system components let's talk about the system components okay uh, that operating system has so it has basically various um, system components so just i'll go through some of them so first will be the process management so it helps uh, the to manage the process okay the process of the system so either it be create or delete a user and, and like the system processes um like the user process and system processes then can be suspension or resumption of processes then can be like the process synchronization process communication or deadlock handling okay now uh then the other system component will be the memo main memory management kind of thing so in this the uh, operating system actually keeps track of uh, the memory which is being currently used like we have the task manager or activity monitor kind of thing then we can decide which processes are actually like we know don't, not we uh, the actually the operating system uh, decides which op processes are loaded into memory like when memory space becomes available kind of thing then it uh, helps like it decides to allocate or deal allocate memory space as needed kind of thing okay so also like uh, now next will be the file management kind of thing so the file management is the create either it be creation deletion of files or the directories like supporting or man like manipulating files and extensions and those directories as well like and mapping the files into secondary storage and backing up files on a stable storage media like kind of a external storage device and hdd hard disk drive okay then other system component is the io system management right so it in this one actually the operating system manages the io operations that are being handled on the device okay then then other system component will be basically a secondary storage management thing right so there are there is a primary storage and secondary storage so the st a uh, storage management kind of thing is there like whenever uh, a free space is any free space is available on the secondary storage device then manage those things allocate a uh, storage space uh, whenever any new file is created so we have to allocate to those things and uh, um like to schedule any kind of uh, requests that are for the memory access kind of thing now uh, another system component is networking right and uh, there are many like one can also be like protecting the system and command interpreter system kind of thing so if you don't know like what command interpreter is like it is an interface uh, of the operating system okay like where the user gives the commands and it is just executed by the operating system okay and this command operator is basically like the command interpreter is basically separated from kernel because if let's say any malicious process is there like which wants to have the access of the kernel then uh, if this command interpreter will be within the kernel then kernel process right so the whole system will be corrupted and nothing will be there that kind of thing that's why the command interpreter is actually different and separated from kernel you can uh, think of the terminal or the command line as the command interpreter 
ओके नाउ आई जस्ट रिवाइज व्हाट वी जस्ट डिड टिल नाउ सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी वेंट थ्रू द टाइप्स ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम एंड बिफोर दैट या बिफोर दैट वी एक्चुअली looked like we actually uh, got to know that there are three parts of operating system services like one is kernel second is library then is application level services okay then we came to the types of operating system like there were five which we discussed one is single user second is multi user third is network work alone then is multitasking or single tasking then is multi processor or single processor okay then we came to the functions of operating system right so what it does and those kind of thing so man memory management multi threading multi user or multi processing kind of thing these kind of things were there then we went through the objectives of operating system so it has to have an abstraction kind of layer it has to allocate resources like managing resources the uh, task manager kind of thing and then is the effect the user interface should be there right then we just went through the point uh, where we discussed uh, like if we want to structurally make and design an operating system then what will be the structure so we discussed five like right so one was monolithic second was hierarchy then is virtual machine system then is exo kernel then is client server model okay then we discuss the system components so basically uh, the five concept which i discussed which we need to know in the whole operating system these are those only just some elaborated kind of thing the first was the process management second system component is memory management third is file management fourth is io management fifth is secondary storage then was the networking then the seventh was protections of the system and then was a command interpreter system yeah and one more uh, service that actually the operating system does is the error detection kind of thing so every time whenever there is a digital uh, device that it always generate some errors uh, because of the influence of uh, the our real world right so basically the bits are actually changed or kind of thing so uh, it is uh, actually detected by the error detection system in the operating system as well and it just corrects those things okay now now we will go into the deeper things of the like the core thing of the operating systems okay so let's go to the system calls and system programs right so the system call uh, is actually the interface between process and the operating system right the system call actually uh, allows the user uh, level processes to request to some service from the operating system okay then the operating system will process uh, it because the processes itself is not allowed to do that kind of process the user level process does not have the privilege to operate uh, operate that process that's why it calls this operating system services okay then is a system program so basically it provides a basic functioning to user so that uh, they do not need to write their own programs or uh, like execution cells that kind of things to actually have that system call so now i think uh, we will talk about processes and all those other details in the next video because this uh, is going too long and i don't want you guys to just forget whatever we have like learned till now okay so see you in the next video